Woman in New York, her parents die. She inherits their home and she says, I'm going to sell it. When she shows up to actually check on it, some people have moved in, changed the locks. When she calls the police, the police say to these squatters, can you prove you live here? And when they can't, the police remove the men. The woman then goes to change the locks, but the police say, if you change the locks, we will arrest you. Don't do it. Even though it's her home and those guys have no proof they live there. She changes the locks. It's her house. The cops then come up. The, or before that, this, the, this guy breaks back in the house. The cops then show back up and arrest the homeowner for unlawful eviction. The squatters stay and say, take me to court. Next thing that happens is exactly what we warned was going to happen. Some guys show up. And they said to the press, look, we, we, we're just going to talk to him. We're just going to talk to him. I wonder what they talked about. Because soon after, these guys split. Not all of them. One guy's on camera being like, I don't know who I paid rent to, but I paid rent, so I live here. And he just seems confused. And then That's uh, the guy who wants his deposit back. Right. Leave, they, were, yeah. they, were, they were like, yeah, so you paid the squatters? And he's like, I guess. I don't know. And he's like some old guy with like missing teeth. I'll tell you what I think happened. When What's going to start happening now more than ever, especially with what we see, we're seeing with the Daniel, Daniel Penny case and uh, Daniel Perry in Texas. And now we've got we've got a bunch of other stories I can pull up from the past couple of weeks of vigilante action in New York City. This is it. it. It is the rise of vigilantism because of the crime spike and because of bail reform. I mean, I didn't even mention this in the opening of the show, but Anna Kasparian says if being on the left means supporting bail reform, which lets murderers out of jail, then she's not on the left anymore. And Jenks like, no, 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 it's not true. And she's like, well, I don't know, because they let out murderers in New York. They find these people. They find body parts scattered all over the place. They find these people living in a house with blood, guts, and flesh everywhere. And they say, we're not going to keep him in jail. We're going we're gonna to let him go. And so she, she's losing it. But I'll tell you what I think happens here in this story. We'll get to that one. You know, you know what would happen if these squatters stayed in the building? When two guys show up and knock on your door and say, we're going to tell you one time, you need to leave. That's all they're going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. And what happens next? These squatters will wake up in the middle of the night with a tap on their shoulder and as soon as they open their eyes, there's going to be two or three guys in ski masks. And one guy's just going to rain a crowbar down on his kneecap. Smack! And then the squatter's going to scream. And they're going to say, you've been warned. And they're going to leave. And when the cops show up, if they show up, the neighbors are all going to say, we didn't see anything. That's where we're heading because of the laws they're passing. Because the police are defending the criminals. And now you got this crazy story, which we'll get into as well in a minute, of the illegal immigrant Criminal alien saying, here's how you steal homes from people in America. Land invasion. That one's particularly disturbing because of the way he was saying it, in my opinion. He was, he was angry. Serious. And he was serious about it. He was like, this is how we go get places to live in the U.S. We just steal them. That video is well, worth watching. That's nuts. When, when civilizations stop respecting property rights, this is what you get. I mean, yeah, you have, you got to move your you mic over you to got, you. You can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> You mumbled the most um, amazing thing, sir. What was it? <laughs> I sure. thought you were going to keep saying that, but I said it last night. Exactly. So when you said it, I was like, yeah, I said exactly the same thing last night. Property okay. rights. And Phil talked about it too. Property rights. Once they go, like every, everything falls apart. It, well, exactly. Yeah. And and in that void, what what arises? Well, mafiosos. Peop, people that will come in and they will enforce property rights on behalf of the citizens. And and that is the only just way of dealing with property is that you have to you have to have some sort of chain of title if you're going to totally disavow and disrespect that in the in the state of new york well then you're going to see the rise of mafia again Let, let's be real all these flash mob burglaries and robberies that we're seeing would not happen if the mafia still existed the way it did you know back in the day capone for right. instance at least the narrative we think we know about the mafia when a couple when a couple of local guys show up to your little grocery store and they say it's time to pay us our protection money. And that's viewed so negatively in like movie tropes. It's like, oh no, they're shaking me down. And if you don't pay, they smash things up. I'll tell you this, I wouldn't want to live that way. I don't know if any, anybody would want to live that way. You want to you live in a world where when someone comes and threatens your business, the cops are there in a moment's notice and they deal with it. And we have the right to defend ourselves while we're waiting for them. Like that guy in New York, they're trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. The bodega owner. And then when he wrestles the knife away and stabs back, they lock him up. 